Hey everybody, thank you for watching Liberian TV Network. Today I'm here with the one and only Joyce. Joy, right? Joy, and yeah. Yeah, she speaks too. I, I'm used to the name she speaks too. So don't 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 get me wrong when I say she speaks to on the entire show. I might keep I I will keep saying she that's fine. Too. Yeah, that is fine. I'm so happy to be to be here with you because you've been doing great stuff. I think you went to Liberia and you 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 may uh, experience your time in Liberia, and there's so much to talk about today. I'm so excited. But before we do that, I just want to show your channel intro, so people, okay, so people know who you are. Um, let me put that up there. All right, so this is my friend Joy. This is her channel. Welcome, Welcome to my, to my channel. channel. This is Joy, Joy from, from She Speaks 2. Make sure you like, make sure you, like, make sure you comment, comment, and make sure you subscribe. All right. I think you guys got to see her channel. You guys saw her channel. If you if you really want to know more, you can go check out her channel. It's called She Speaks 2. A few minutes ago, when I, not a few minutes ago, every time I try to search that, She Speaks 2, it pop up quick. Like it's mm -hmm. like she already she's already known she's Liberian celebrity. So um she's our superstar. So I'm so happy to be talking to her because I'm a big fan of her. Um Thank especially you. and when you were in Liberia going to Caribbean, going to different places, showing us your experience there. I think that was amazing. Um first of all, before we go more into um, details, Liberia and other stuff, um but anyway, before we continue, do you want to say, um, do you want to tell people a little bit about your background? You don't have to say things you don't want to say, just. Okay. Um, so I came to America after the coup, immediately after the coup, um, went to kindergarten, elementary school, um, and then we went back to Liberia in 1987. We were there for three years, um, some of the best three years of my life that I could ever remember. Um, and I think that solidified my love for Liberia then. Um, unfortunately, we all know the war happened in 1990. Um, unfortunately, we were stuck in Liberia for maybe about three months. We went to the Ivory Coast. Um, from the Ivory Coast, we came back to America settled back in Oklahoma, which is where we were the first time. Um, and then I've been here ever since. I've always been drawn to my country. I've always known that I was um, Liberian. I always tell people it's not so serviceful all the time. So don't get it twisted. Just because I have a blue passport now, I used to have a green passport. So um, I always were, was drawn to my country. I always loved my country, knew I wanted to go back. Fortunately for me, I married a man who is Liberian, who had the same sentiment. Um, and so I visited in 2014, I took my um, son. I visited in 2016, um, and then I came in 2020. Yeah. So there we have it. Yeah, I'm so glad to be hanging out with you today. Um, it's always um, great. I mean, a lot of people that know me um, <laughs> from my work here, I work in media, I think the last time I was telling you, um, it's like they are telling me that when you were on your little, sh when you're on, they always say you're on that little show. I say it's not a little show. I have a lot of subscribers. And they say when you're on your Liberian show, you seem very excited when you're talking to your fellow Liberians. It's so fun. I say, yeah, because um, I mean, when it comes to everything, I'm Liberian. I feel so excited and I'm always proud of people who are uh, like to see Liberian out there doing stuff. Especially when you went back to Liberia, you started showing different places and stuff like that. It shows that you are Liberian. You're trying to really represent our country. But before yeah. we get more into Liberia, one thing I want to ask you, though, I know when you, the time that you came here, it's it was um, one of the difficult times. We didn't have all these things that we have now, um, Instagram, uh, Facebook. I'm not trying to say you are old. I'm just saying. Oh, don't hang on, young. Yeah, I came here too like about 14 years ago. I know we didn't have certain things, and it's not how things are open now, where people can just go online and know things about Liberia, Africa in general. So mm -hmm. growing up here, I know it's more a little bit challenging. I know you. Yes. So how was your experience here? Growing up here, it, it was, 
I mean, it wasn't a difficult experience as far as being um, an immigrant in that aspect. I think it was more difficult, like um, navigating between two worlds because um, a lot of people assume that all Africans are dark, um, all Africans have accents. And a lot of times people didn't know I was Liberian or African until I told them. And um, so, but I knew I was Liberian. I knew there were certain things. There's a culture in Black America. There's a Liberian culture. Then there's the white American culture. So as an immigrant, you have to successfully navigate through all of those different cultures. And unfortunately, you have to even start as a child. And so sometimes there's an identity um, like some kind of, not identity crisis, but identity searching where you have to know how to stand um, in who you are. You can't just, you, when you go around this group of people, you can't become that person. When you go around this group of people, you just have to stand in your identity. So that takes a little searching as far as being um, a child of you know, immigrants or being an immigrant yourself. Basically a refugee. When I came, I was a refugee. So um, the second time. So basically- no, we didn't do the so because we were here before, okay. um, we were able to come back very easy the second time. I was here, I came, like I said, 1980 to 1987. Then um, we went to Liberia in 1990. So we didn't forge, we didn't have to do all that resettlement. We just went to the Ivory Coast, went to the embassy. My little sister is an American citizen. My mom um, had her, um, she had gotten asylum before. So they just reopened that case and we were able to come back, you know, easily. Yeah. How was your first experience when you returned back to Liberia? In 2014, my first experience was beautiful. I went with my sister. I went with my son and we were there for two weeks. We went over the spring break and, you know, spring break here is usually one week. So he missed another week of school. I didn't care. Um, and it was it was wonderful. It was beautiful. I had from that time, the yearning to go back was even more. My father lives there. My mother lives there. I have my cousins. My uncle was there who was alive at the time. My cousins were there. Um, they had moved back from um, New York and Atlanta and they were my age mm -hmm. and they were just thriving. My cousin opened Evelyn's restaurant. Mm -hmm. She's the owner. Of, yeah. she, she, she unfortunately she passed away, but she was the owner of Evelyn's restaurant. Mm -hmm. So she was just thriving. My other cousin um, was at a bank. Um, everyone was thriving. So I looked at them. They were my age. And I said, wow, I want to come back. Yeah. I went in March and I was, you know, trying to talk to my mom to kind of help me out, talk to different people about jobs. Then Ebola hit that summer. So oh, Liberia, oh, yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah, Liberia was off the table because Ebola, you know, so that was that wasn't going to happen. Yeah. Then um, in so that was 2014, 2015, I fell in love. I got married. I had a baby. So I didn't go back until 2016. Me and my husband went back. Nice. Um, and, and then um, then we went back in 2020. Yeah. Mm hmm. I know you mentioned your husband. So mm -hmm. usually I don't ask these questions, like mostly like a personal question. Uh, who are you with or who are you dating? But I know you mentioned your husband. So I want to ask this, maybe it will inspire a lot of us that are not married yet to see how we can find our own Liberian <laughs> Jew. <laughs> how did you meet your husband? Uh, this is a, if you want to know how I met my right? He is Liberian. Okay. Um, I am from Carisburg. My mm -hmm. husband is from Carisburg. Oh, we wow. I met my husband when I was 13. So I've been knowing him since I was 13. And then, um, you know, 13, puppy love, 13 years old, not really going to work. Then when I came to America, wow. I, was about, I was about 19. Um, we tried it again. It didn't work. And then here we are, like, years later and it's working we have children so i've known him since i was 13. somebody's watching you peace and that is peace that is my um my youtube sister she has been so kind and gracious to me she knows i feel like i've known her for years she knows all my family so that is peace and my heart goes out to her um she actually just recently lost her mother so i know that she's been taking a break so my heart goes out to you peace and thank you for watching um uh, she said, thank you, guys. Um, yes, you're welcome. We love yeah. you. 
Mm-hmm. So the second time you went to Liberia, what inspired you to go there? I um, the second time, okay, so 2016, I told you the first time. The mm-hmm. second time, me and my husband went, and we went to have my birthday party. I wanted to be a celebrity. I, I, I didn't mean to cut you off. You made a letter in the year, or didn't they not you say? They're like, I, I hope, I hope this guy, he's, uh, no matter what, wherever he's sitting right now, he's laughing, he's laughing. If he, maybe he'll watch the video later. I will try to email the video to you, by the way, or drop out to you so you can. Thank you. Your channel. But yes. hopefully he, he will be proud that he has a wife that really loves him. Oh, he yeah. Says, you keep measuring him. It's a good thing. I really like that. I mean, yes. me, our generation, having a, a person who really loves you for real, who care about you, it's a big, big deal. Yes. It's something that, as a guy, you have to treasure. Because dating these days is so difficult. But if you find the right person, it's a good, it's a good thing. It's so, a blessing. Yeah, I didn't need to cut you out, please. I just got carried away. <laughs> I got carried away. Um, represent represent Poco. Oh, that? that is my cousin. This is Dr. Nima Elliott from uh, Maryland County. Oh, yes. wow. Maryland. <laughs> I love Maryland. I, yes. I love because I grew He's up watching. in Maryland County, so I, I visited a grand crew in Maryland when I was, when I was there. Yes. Yeah. So, yeah. Watching from Australia, why having my lunch break? Joy, you are special. She is oh, special. thank you. Thank you, Miss Lewis Wakwa. I appreciate that. Thank you, you guys. Yeah. Huh? You know that person? Um, I know the last name. I know there was a family in Oklahoma in Tulsa by that name. So may- maybe she's a relative. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so I came in um 20. I oh Nima the lifestyle. That's my other cousin, that Dr. Nima Elliott's oh, sister. Your oh family are watching. Wait, now did you advertise this thing on Facebook or something? I, I told my family and then my cousin Nima, she just sent it out to the family. So I guess everyone yeah. is watching. And she yeah. actually has, I want to tell you about her. She actually has a lifestyle vlog. And blog. Um, she's Liberian, and very few Liberian people have those types of blogs. So yeah. it's just something it does cook. She does cooking, decorating. She's just one of those types of people. So yeah. back to the story. Mm-hmm. In 2018, um, thank you, Leo and Bass. In 2018, my husband um and I went because I wanted to have a big birthday party. And um, so we went in 2018 and my cousin Nima, who just commented, he actually went for the first time. He was born in Liberia during the war, but they left. So he went with me. His sister went with me and we had a ball. And yeah. um, in 2020, I went, you know, I, that was 2016, actually. In 2016 is when we went for the birthday party. And then 2020, I came. So. Yeah. Wow, that, that's amazing. People are commenting. I like the fact that I, I said, I knew, I thought I was the only fan of you, but it seems a lot of people are a fan of you. They, they're commenting. Um, yeah. Leo, Leo said, I uh, appreciate your show. Well, it's not my show. Joy is the main focus point today, but thank you, Leo. We really appreciate you. But Joy, she's, uh, she's the, the real deal here. I see why some of us will just sit down like this. We got our popcorn and be watching her actually saying stuff. Um, oh, thank you. Yeah, um, but I mean, like people are just commenting on um, that's my cousin and, and that is my uncle and cousins. I think that's so something- that, that is the family in Tulsa that she I said I knew the family. She's saying that's her uncle and her cousins yeah. in Tulsa. So it's a small world. Yeah. Washington from Ganta um, City. Uh, Nimba County. Nimba County. Yes. Babwa, if you are wherever you are. Babwa, I will eat a man. Yes. Okay. Okay, you, Joyce. <laughs> <laughs> you were just talking about Maryland County, and now you you were speaking yes. about you. That's good. See, um, I appreciate you a lot enjoying the conversation in Gamta City, Nimba <laughs> County. <laughs> My brother, brother Francie. Thank you for yes. watching, and uh, we really appreciate you. I have subscribed to her channel. Very intelligent and um, elegant. Young lady, you are very there. You are. Thank you. Thank you so thank much. Thank you. Thank you, Davy. Yeah. Thank you so much for watching. Um. So, how was your experience in Liberia when you went back the second time? This is the big one, though, because okay, when you, you made a video, and I met some people who who really appreciate the video that you you made. 
but there are other people that say, and I can't, I don't know what they're getting or can I do. So one of the things my little sister said, she was like, people that haven't been to Liberia, when you are saying something, they just think that you're putting Liberia back until they come down here, they got to experience it. Watching, sorry, these people are commenting. I want to put them up there too. Um, watching from Pennsylvania, you and Pele Gare here. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I got to read the library and support English a little bit. But yeah. Anyway, yeah but, but, um, can you tell me your experience? Okay. Before I tell you my experience, of the story. before I tell you my experience, I have to give some disclaimers. Okay. Um, the first thing I want to say is I want to let let people know that it is okay to criticize Liberia. It's okay to see things that are wrong and speak on it. Liberia, I, I, I'm going to say this again. We act like Liberia is a newborn baby that we have to hold and rock gently. And we can't say nothing but, oh, the baby fine. Hey, look yeah. at the baby. No, Liberia, I say this, Liberia is the grandfather of Africa. We've been in a war. We've had some dark times, but I expect more from my country because I love my country. That, yeah. that will never change. That's the first thing. The second thing is when you do criticize Liberia, the first thing people want to say to you is, what a, what a, what a solution? I don't have all the solutions, but I do, I do want to do my part. I don't have all the solutions. Because I, I'm not God, I'm not magic, but I can notice something that's wrong. Just like I can see something wrong in the United States, doesn't mean I have the solution, but I do wanna do my part. So for the most part, my experience in Liberia was positive. And that's what I, happy to see Joy again. Oh, I know him. Thank you, Christopher. Okay. Man, um, I, I, for some reason, people, you, you are blowing up this thing. I mean, <laughs> it's, there are said, people that come on my show to get this kind of comment, you know, Joy, I, I'm going to, I don't need to cut you out again, but I just can't help myself. I think I'm going to invite you on the show again. Maybe. Oh, I would love to come back. Thank you. you you're if, driving crazy to say, let's do a weekly show. I'm just joking. <laughs> if you bring weekly topics, I wouldn't mind. I know. Um, Christopher, he says, I rock with Joy and I rock with you, Christopher. Thank you so much. Yeah. Um. So um, we, we don't want to criticize Liberia. We want to just hold it gently and just 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 um, indulge in this baby that's not meeting its milestone. The baby is nine months, is not eating solid food. The baby is 12 months. The baby not walking. The baby is not saying its first words. And we just saying, OK, it's all right. It's not OK. So I just want to give those disclaimers. So for the most part, like my experience in Liberia was positive. And if you look at my channel, my channel is all about positivity, but I'm human. At a certain point, the things that I saw around me did start to take a toll on me. The yeah. things that I saw around me, and just because my one enjoying, because I, I, I wasn't suffering, but the type of heart that I have, I saw it going on all around me and it, take, it takes a toll on me. It took a toll on me to see certain things. I have a 13 year old son. To see a child younger than my 13-year-old son selling in the middle of the street, selling plastic bag, looking like they're malnourished um, with, with, with um, skin issues, seeing a little girl washing dishes in a cook shop. My daughter is five. Seeing a, a six-year-old washing dishes in a cook shop when she should be in school. How can, you, how can those things not affect you if you see it daily? So they affected me. They affected me. And that's why I did that video. I needed to have a mental break from Liberia. And something about me saying this offended. I, overwhelmingly, I got positive and um, positive uh, feedback. But then like the 10 percent of the negative feedback was very harsh. Somebody told me I don't like black people because um, you go there. You don't want to talk about it. Somebody said um, <laughs> you hit Liberia, and it was just ridiculous. If why I would hit, somebody like, say, why would somebody say you don't like black people when you're um, black? because I just want to go to Liberia. Your husband is even black. Yeah, but he said his point was you come to America, you never did a video about America, how America bad, but you go to Liberia and you just want to talk about Liberia, which is his reasoning was very absurd. I don't even entertain those types of conversations, but it was so offensive to people about me giving my um my my criticism and my criticism came from love. If I didn't expect much from Liberia, I wouldn't care. I would drive in my air conditioned SUV and just yeah. drive. Yeah. 
I wasn't yeah. suffering, so I, I could I could turn a deaf ear and a blind eye to what I saw around me, but yeah. I couldn't. But I yeah. couldn't. Yeah. This conversation is going to continue because it's very interesting, and I want people to see you from your point of view. This is a girl who actually trying to go back to Liberia. So for real, she doesn't hate Liberia. It's the same reason when we post certain video on our channel, people will say, Oh, y'all showing the daddy country. I said, don't blame me for showing how Liberia actually is. Blame your, uh, people that we all elected. I'm not saying I voted for people in power, but I'm just saying in general, if somebody become president or senator or representative, I have to accept that we all voted the president. Uh, that, that okay. yeah. So, but don't blame us. Blame the people in power that are not actually doing their job to clean the place. So it's the same. The girl is trying to tell you this is what I actually see. I'm not gonna sugarcoat it. I'm not gonna milk it. Um, this is how. It, anyway, let me put some comments up here. Okay. Um, this is Liberia is way too old to look like that anyway so we all have the right to speak on it do you want to say something about what my brother is saying anthony i i, I agree with anthony it it is because of our love for our country and i'll keep saying that that we we expect more we should see more we yes. we it's not for a lack of resources that we look like that we have the resources so what is the actual problem thank, thank god uh, somebody commented Thank God for your great hard working and network. Thank oh, you. God. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> you guys, your focus on the girl. She's the one inspired by you. Me, I just hear mm -hmm. oh, Me, I hear you with my colloquia. So, Joy, mm -hmm. I, don't, I know I can't blame you. You were in the U.S. for a very long time and you went to Liberia. You spent some time there, but you, you have been in the U.S. for a long time. Do you know how to speak the simple colloquia? Yeah, man. My man, I can speak it. What are you talking? Look at that. I, I, yeah, I can speak it. I just my professional boy. I told you, it's not so serviceful all the time. Yeah. It's not so serviceful. <laughs> yeah. You know, you know, um, I now I scare you. The last girl that I challenged, who was speaking Siri, I challenged her to be my boy in Colloquia. I'm a <laughs> so, so now you are saying that kind of thing. I said, okay, let me slow down. They cannot you say. Yeah, <laughs> I've been in California for a little bit long, so I shouldn't challenge the person. Um, I'm gonna put some comment out there. I got some questions for you, and we have some time, so um, it's not a question, but these comments I just want to put them up there so people see them too. Um, African has to change their mindset. I understand the leaders are weak in Africa, but people must change. We are gonna make uh, people pick up trash. Men can do that even without, you know. Anyway, uh, Joy is a natural comedian uh, too. Yeah, so. Thank you. They say, they say you are funny. You are, yes. not just, you are not just professional. They say you are funny. Mm -hmm. I try. I try. <laughs> yeah. We cannot live in uh, denial of what wrong with the country. Thank Joy for speaking out. Joy, Amen. You about that a lot of people are watching the most the one of the good thing about this is people are commenting like crazy i cannot keep up with asking you at the same time putting the comment out there which is a good thing yes like, yeah um i was I, what i want to say with is even with our criticism then we have to and when, after we criticize then we have to have a plan of action what do we do we can't you know, I criticized and then I, I took my time and thought about it. What can I do? And um, I think my passion is, I, I didn't know if I told, said this earlier, I'm a registered nurse. Mm -hmm. um, I have my bachelor's, I have a BS and I'm a registered nurse. So um, my passion is to help people um, increase, like make healthcare better. But I also have a passion to work with young women. So I am going to be working on a foundation that helps to give young women, um, teenage girls life skills. Um, and, and another caveat of that that just came to me because I've been writing my plans down. I want to deal with also sexual assault victims. I want to give them a voice. I want to help them prosecute 
um, these people. I want rape to not be a national problem problem in Liberia. So that has been a little thing that has come to me just recently. I saw where a 13 year old girl um, blessing just recently basically was sexually assaulted and she is now deceased. Um, and so that was in the news just last week. And I said, that has to be a part of what I want to do. Yeah. So, But one of the things I want to ask you though, you went to Liberia, you had this struggle. I know some of the things you experienced, they are real. Um, my sister, the guy, I think I mentioned her earlier, my sister was telling me, my little sister, Patricia, and when I, when I was talking about it, I said, you know, Joy made a video and a lot of people were saying this and I sent her the video and they were that she was like, now this actually sent it, but she knows. She said that, you know, people that haven't, I said that earlier, I said, she said that people that, that are not in Liberia or haven't been to Liberia, they don't really know what we are going through. If you yeah. are driving and you see a car coming to you in the opposite direction, you will freak out, especially when yeah. you find where these things don't happen like that. And I understand because LA traffic is the worst. Everybody knows that. Um, right. Driver will cut you up, but you don't get a driver coming towards you like that. It doesn't happen like that. So it's, it, that's one of the things she was telling me. So you went through all these experience in Liberia. What make you to want to go back again? You told me you were going back. Yes, I am gonna go back. I have a, I have a calling. Um, I, I really believe that I was, I was put here to get a better life, mm -hmm. in order to enrich the lives of people in Liberia. I don't believe that God brought me to America to let me be educated, go to school, and to just forget that I was ever a Liberian or a part of Liberia, I do believe the reason that my life has been improved is so I can improve the life of someone else. Yeah. So that's what I believe. That's it. That's no, a, yeah. yeah. Oh, no better place than my country to do yeah. that. Yeah. That's a very good thing. Before we continue, I know a lot of people are watching right now. And Joyce, if people really like you. They really oh, yeah. I see Thank a lot you. of people turning in right now. It's like, wow, the people really like it get here. Um, all the things she's saying are the right things. Um, so let me just let you guys know, in case you don't know her YouTube channel, Joyce, somebody who um, stayed in the U.S. for a long time, she visited Liberia and she decided to go to Liberia and stay there for a while. And she came back here and now she's going back there again to make a different there. Um, so if you don't know about her YouTube channel, if you, if you want to check out a YouTube channel like other YouTube channels, that talk about Liberia. She has her own style. I think, as you can see, many people are watching. They are commenting a lot because this girl, she made good videos. She has a lot of fans, people that really like her. I like her YouTube channel, too. Um, and she's a great wife, too. She always talks good things about her mm -hmm. man and her, and her son. Son, right? Yeah, I have a son and a daughter. Yeah, yeah. Oh, daughter. Look at that. Yeah, so she always talks good about her family. This person is very intelligent. It's not just somebody who just, and she also know both. They get nine years, two people don't know. So check out her YouTube channel. When we are talking about Liberia, check out her YouTube channel. Um, yeah. Joyce, what what do you have to tell Liberians abroad? I know you're pointing your finger at me because I've been here for a long time now. I haven't gone back home, but mm -hmm. at least I have things going there. But um, what will you tell Liberian abroad about Liberia going home and all of that, starting businesses? Um, I would tell them to go without any expectations because when you go without any expectations, you're open to the experience. I think um, a lot of times we go with clouded judgment, especially if we've lived in the Western hemisphere, Western world for a while, we go with clouded judgments, preconceived notions. Um, we go um, maybe expecting a little bit more. So go with an open mind um, and, and, and take the experience in. And, it, and, and when I went for two weeks, anybody can enjoy for two weeks because you having uh, two weeks or a month you can enjoy. So anybody can enjoy. It's when you decide to go and make that your home that um, it, it could be it can be frustrating and you really have to adapt to those changes. Um, one of the questions I wanted to ask you, though, the, based on the electricity and running water, how was it leaving everything behind, like 
you, like I was saying, you can flip your lights on and stay on the whole night. You can run the water the whole time. Like for me, I like hot water. So mm -hmm. I will always turn my shower on and it will stay on until the water get hot or warm before I shower. Um, even when I'm washing my hands, I like the, 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 the warm water. How was it leaving this behind to go stay in Liberia for that period of time? Um, so the house that we have in Liberia is not much different structurally than a house in America. We, I mean, we have LEC, then we have the generator, then we have um, we have the running water. We have a hot water heater that was excellent. I mean, my water was scalding hot; it, it could burn you. So we didn't have it. Was um, I mean, of course, it was frustrating sometimes. Um, LEC is gone. Put a generator on. LEC is back. Turn. You know, it, it sometimes those things would be frustrating. Um, um, the water, it was never an issue. I mean, we did have, we do have to treat our own water. So there's, there are things that you have to do to be safe. Um, but yeah, the, the LEC thing was very irritating sometimes. Um, the Wi-Fi situation sometimes could be irritating. Um, it would take longer to upload, but those are, if those were the only issues that I could that were in the country. Those are easy things to adjust to. Um, there are people that don't even have electricity, don't have generators, don't have running water. So yeah. I count myself to be one of the blessed um, ten percent in Liberia who have those things. So those things are not things that I would really complain about. Um, yeah. One of the biggest things is in America. I drive. I drive myself everywhere. But because of the driving conditions, road road conditions. I, I was terrified to drive. So in a way I was restricted. I always had to have a driver or my husband drive me somewhere because I, I couldn't drive. I couldn't take, um, like you said, the cars coming at me. I couldn't take the, the pim pim doing this, doing that. It was, it was unsafe, you know, for me to, to drive as a, to me now, because I didn't grow up driving there as a woman. So that was in one way that I feel like my freedom was taken from me. Something that I do routinely here, I couldn't do in my own country because I didn't feel safe doing it. Yeah. Okay. Uh, for somebody who is preparing to go to Liberia right now, mm -hmm. I know maybe you, you may have said something similar to that. But for somebody who is preparing to go to Liberia right now, what will you tell them what, if they come to you? Hey, she speaks too. I know you speak too. Uh, <laughs> uh, what do you think? What's your suggestion? Uh, are, they, are they going to live? Is that what they're they're planning on yeah. living there? If they just want to visit the first time for a very long okay. time. They haven't been there. And they're thinking about, I'm going to go there first and I'll live there or in one question. Um, I would tell them to think about where they're going, um, where they're where they're staying. Do, are they someone that has to have air conditioning because a lot of homes don't have it? Where are they staying? Are you get, staying in a hotel? Are you staying with your auntie husband who you haven't seen since Jijirawa time? Are you going to stay with your auntie? Do you know how her house is? Are you going to feel comfortable? And even your cousins that you grew up with, they will see from you. So are you, how, where, where are you staying? Is it a nice place? Do you have a vehicle? How do you plan on getting around? Is there a car? So make sure you have the logistics part taken um, care of. So when you get there, nothing is a surprise. Yeah. Um, and be prepared when you go there to be perceived as the rich family member coming from America, be prepared to be able to hand out money like candy. So, mm. so are you prepared for that? So if you stay with family member, say you're mean. huh? If you don't do it and say that, that person me, man. And if you stay with family members, be prepared for them to say, ma, we, we looking, we, what we cooking today? And these people have been cooking since woo woo time, but now that you're here, they need, they need the money. What we're cooking for this? So be prepared. Do you want to stay there? Is it better for you to stay at a hotel, stay with, um, stay at a guest house? So be prepared for that. Um, transportation is an issue. Um, take your anti malarials. Like I said, my background is nursing. So you always want to, every medicine that you take here in America, and I have a video about uh, medical considerations when traveling to Liberia, your medications that you take. In America, you would take it, take them to Liberia. Don't go to Liberia and think you're going to live by a young boy, a young girl fantasy where you don't need medication anymore. So be prepared to take everything that you need medically. Uh, have extra money. The um, the Corona test is seventy five dollars. 
Um, even if you come with one from the United States or another country, you're tested at the airport, you have to pay, you have to pay to leave. There are many people who didn't get the results on time to leave. They had to buy new tickets because they couldn't get on the flight. So always have extra money, have a plan of action in case something happens. Yeah. So my channel, She Speaks To, promotes positive aspects of Liberia. Um, I have a, uh, in my videos, I have a restaurant series. I visited Liberian restaurants. I passed out medical supplies with Cummings Africa Foundation. Um, one of the highlights of that, we went to Nimba County. I went to Saclapie, Ganta. I went all over Nimba County. Uh, we went to Bumi County. We went to Cape Mount. We went to Margibi County, passed out medical supplies. Um, so my my channel is all about promoting positivity about Liberia to open it up to people who never thought, who maybe have been in America forever and say, well, if this girl who look like Americanized can go there and enjoy herself, I, I too can go to my own country and enjoy myself. So I hope that I at least touch one person to return to Liberia. Um, so I started YouTube in the summer of 2020. Mm -hmm. I started it based on this show that I was watching. Um, it was about sexual assault. It was called I May Destroy You. The main character is originally from Ghana, Michaela Cole. So I started watching this show and I thought this show was brilliant. Now, it's not a show for the faint of heart. Um, and so she was just, um, the show was just brilliant. And I had so many opinions, but because it was a pandemic, it's like, you couldn't really just sit down and talk to people. And I said, I have to, oh, thank you. My cousin said that, yeah, it sounds better yeah, now. Yeah, it was a little bit different. Yeah. Yes. Um, and so the show was brilliant and I decided to start doing reviews of the show. Um, and so I, after I did the reviews, um, then I had nothing to talk about. Then when I traveled to Liberia, I was sitting there in Liberia. I think I had been there about two weeks. I said, wait a minute. I'm in Liberia. What's wrong with me? I'm in this country. So many people want to know about Africa, not only just Liberians. So I just started. That's how um, She Speaks To really took off. People just started um, emailing me, writing, asking questions, encouraging me. And then it just took off from there. Yeah. Now, my other question is, why are a lot of people watching you tonight? I'm just joking. <laughs> a lot of people are watching, which I really like. It's like people are watching. It's like a lot of people follow you. It's a good thing. It's a good, good thing considering the fact that you have, the, like you were saying, a few people said something when you try to make that video. So yeah. it's a good thing that they really want to hear your point of view on different platforms other than your own yeah uh, but, but i really like the fact that you are um you you um you you have something that is promoting liberia how do you feel about it now that you are maybe you might go one day you might go to the liberian community where people in which people will recognize you like me like i did during the liberian independent day i went somewhere and somebody was like you had a liberian tv guy i said this is why I never used to show my face on Liberian TV network mm -hmm. because it's not about me. It was more about promoting Liberia. But for you personally, how do you feel when you go somewhere and people, maybe people might recognize you or something, or how do you feel that your channel is going good now? Um, in Liberia, I was actually recognized at the grocery store, um, at the restaurant, at the airport, wow. and it was it was very. I was recognized at the airport in Brussels. I was also recognized at the airport um, in Liberia, uh, Robertsfield. So it, it it's always been positive. At a, I was eating at a re another restaurant. A man and his wife were there. They he, they we watch your channel all the time, and so um, it's always been a positive thing. It always blows me away. Um, the boy, the, the guy that I uh, met at the restaurant, he wanted to take pictures with me. Um, and then there is was a subscriber that was visiting Liberia. We went we went for lunch. She treated me for lunch um, wow. and we're still friends now just because of YouTube. So wow. I think it's a positive thing. It made me feel like I was like, wow, people really watch my channel. So it made me yeah. feel good. It was positive. I loved it. So it's a yeah. good feeling when you see that people are recognizing what you are doing, not in a negative way, but in a positive way. Um, yes. Now that you are returning to Liberia, what do you look forward to doing the most? 
Uh, when I return to Liberia, I look forward to putting the plan and the foundation, the nonprofit organization that I'm working on. I look forward to putting that in motion. I look forward to going to Liberia and now having a purpose, having a reason why I'm there, a tangible reason that I can touch um, and feel and know that I'm making a difference. So I look forward to that. I look forward to also kind of settling in um, this time. I think my mindset is there are no surprises. I think nothing can surprise me at this point. Um, so I think I would be I, mentally, I'll be more settled in and I know what to expect, what not to expect. So I think it will be better. And I think I will pay attention to when I, I mentally, I may need a break. I may need to travel, may need to get away. And, and it may not be such a negative feeling this time. It may just be something that I recognize and I take note of and I do it. Yeah. So. Yeah, that is good. Um, you 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 have family in the U.S. here, right? Yes. When when you were going to Liberia, I know Liberia. We went through a lot of the struggle and the war and everything like that. How did they feel? Were they afraid? Like you? Were going oh like yeah. Um, you know, you go, when you're going to the Caribbean, you go into the Bahamas. You tell your family, "Have fun, have fun." When you go to Liberia, be careful. That country is not good. So. And as a person, you hear that more than once. And it, it does scare you. And both times, when I went to Liberia in 2014, I took my son. When I went in 2020, I took my daughter. It's important that my children know where I come from. So I took both of them. So not only am I going, but I'm also taking like the most precious things that I have, my child. So yeah. there is an extra protective thing that I have. I have to protect this girl, you know, and so, or my son. So, um, yeah, you, you get a lot of advice that scares you, you know, that we should travel and be careful. Don't eat a nobody husk. You know, you hear those kind of things. And yeah. so it plays, it plays on your psyche. You know, you, yeah. you can't, you can't fully relax because those things are in the back of your head. Like, well, we go, don't trust nobody. You hear those kind of things. So, you know, sometimes I heard those kind of advice. Um, yeah. Very few people. Now, my cousins who are my age, um, like the ones that are watching, or they may not, they may not be watching so far, but the ones that were watching, they were very positive. You know, younger people is like, yeah, you know, make a difference, go there. Yeah. But the older people, which you can't really blame the older people because they were they have been through a lot. So for their perception. Is, is sometimes negative because of what they went through and you really can't blame them. That's what they went through. Those That was their experience. Yeah. So. I don't know if I asked you the question already, but I, I maybe I can say again. You can remind me. Um, we are almost out of time based on the time that I scheduled you, even though a lot of people are watching, but <laughs> I don't want to keep you too much so you'll be scared. The next time I say, hey, guys, do you want to come? You're like, and I, I got this going on, you know, girls. <laughs> I I know I I with somebody that with they don't want to be around. You. No, uh, right now I'm too busy. I'm doing yeah, the, I'm doing the other thing. I'm doing that thing. It's uh, okay. But anyway, um, just one thing I want to say though. What's the number one thing if somebody asks you? What's the number one thing you like about Liberia? And what's the other thing you wish had ch that people would change about Liberia? That will change. Uh -huh. The number one thing I can say that I love about, like, I'll say this about Liberians, I think their perseverance, um, I think mentally, physically, Liberians are the strongest people that I know. Um, the women, the men, they like they have been through so much. It's a wonder that some of us are not stone cold crazy based on some of the horror stories. And to think that those people wake up every day, they're selling in the market, they're doing this, they, they're hustling day to day. I, the, Our perseverance to survive, I think, is one of the strongest in the world. I will never take that away from Liberian people. Never. And so, and, and even that, some of them came to this country with nothing. And when you see what they have built, they came as refugees. We didn't have the benefit of coming with everything with homes. So I say what I love about librarian people is our per perseverance to survive. Yeah. Um, what I what I we what I guess, what I would like to change the most um, in Liberia is our mindsets. Um, I would like to, I would want us to d demand more. We need more. What we have is not enough is not suitable we need to demand more we need to um demand more from our leaders we can't just have good time 
Yeah. Um, and, and enjoy and, and ball for the weekend. And yeah, man, we give a bag of rest or whatever it is we can. We we should demand more from our leaders, demand more um, from, from those that we put in office. Yeah. I think you are right, though, 100%. This is one of the reasons currently I'm not committed to one political party. Because it's like, um, I don't, I want, because it's normally, in, in certain sense, I want it to happen like that. I want to say, okay, I have a party. But the problem yeah. is in Liberia right now, the only way that we can change things around for people to really be serious is every election, if we change people. If they don't do well, you, move, you, you remove you change them, them and bring different person in. So it, it becomes very competitive. But if you don't do that, people feel like every time they're getting elected over and over and over, they will just remain in power and they don't they won't make the difference. And I think Liberia needs some type of change. We really yeah. need some type of change. I don't usually go too political to political to I don't either to point finger at people that they may not doing it, that person not doing it, but I think Liberia needs change. <laughs> Is there anything I haven't touched on before we let you go? Um, I just want to say thank you for um, reaching out to me. Thank you for the opportunity to use your platform um, to have me on here. So I just want to say thank you for that. And thank you for those that stayed up um, to watch this. I appreciate it. I appreciate all the comments. So thank you. Thank you so much for coming on. I really appreciate you. Like I said, I, I meant it. I'm going to bring you on again. Maybe <laughs> we, when are you going back? Unless you don't want to say it, but when are you going back to Liberia? It's a secret, but just know okay. when I go back, I'm gonna hire the, the people to come dance to the airport, lay down the lapa. It will be a whole she speaks to spectacle. So just and wait. Since you are celebrity now, it'll be so good. But when you, I uh, please, please stay in touch. I um, will. Yeah, I would. I would somehow, uh, you know, like stay in touch with you too, so that when you go to Liberia, I want to interview you from Liberia too. Sure. Because you're, when you go back there, you're experienced. We want to know. We will all yeah. be curious to know what's going on. Is she okay, okay now that she go back there for the, for the other time? So um, hopefully we stay in touch, but I just, I, I really want to appreciate you for coming on tonight and you did a great job. I think this feels so fast tonight than other interview that I had. It was so fun <laughs> because you did a great job. I mean, people were commenting. I couldn't keep up with the comments at some point. I think you have a lot of people too that love you. They were coming on here. And yes. one thing I can say for sure, this lady, she's very intelligent. Um, you guys go, go check out her YouTube channel for sure. She's a family person. I like that mm -hmm. kind of value in people as a person. Somebody who's a family person, your husband, should be proud to really. If I come to Liberia, I will try to meet that guy and tell him. Yes. I may keep that woman. If you don't keep that woman, me, I might say, I'll kind of to be your boy with Rotten. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, but thank you so much for coming on here. I really appreciate you and I hope you have a great night. Thank um, you. Yeah. All right. You thank you so speak. much. Yeah. All right. Thank you. I'll keep in touch. Absolutely. And good night to everyone. Thank you.